people are voting for Trump. I, I, I would take a bullet for him. The party of Lincoln, no more. I mean, they raided his house. They did the poor guy. He's been through the mill. He's not a politician. He's a businessman that wants to run America. This is now the party of Trump. The national Republican leader, a lightning rod, a hero to much of the country, a villain to some of the rest. I wear with honor my endorsement from President Trump. I wear that with a badge of honor. The Republican choice for president for a third straight election, a candidate who has never won the popular vote. We're gonna beat him again. Now on Scripps News Report, we explore his power in this, the new Republican Party. And we're gonna make America great again, greater than ever before. Donald Trump, just the mere mention of his name conjures up all sorts of images, good thoughts, bad thoughts, a, a mix of both. But one thing is clear, this is the national Republican leader in 2024. This is the man more Republicans than not want back inside the White House. It's also the man that some Republicans say may cost them the election, hurting them again as the polls show he did in the last midterm elections. On tap, a powerhouse panel to break it all down. Former Congressman Joe Walsh, who has insight into the inner workings of the Republican Party. Tara Setmeyer has a unique perspective from her days on Capitol Hill. She left the Republican Party after Trump refused to concede the last election to Joe Biden. And Miles Taylor, who under the pseudonym Anonymous spoke out against Donald Trump from inside the Trump administration while serving as chief of staff at the Department of Homeland Security. His book is Blowback a warning to save democracy from Trump's revenge. This half hour will not only get their insight, but also put their feet to the fire because to some extent, they are the outliers, outliers in a party that continues to back the man they oppose. But first, Alex Miller leads us off with a report on how the former president is tightening his grip on what was once the party of Lincoln. Del Donald Trump is the Republican Party's nominee for the third straight election. But there is still active resistance, even amongst Republicans, to the idea that he is the party's leader, even as his control tightens. People have to understand that America first, the MAGA movement, is the new Republican Party. The 77-year-old former president, now officially the party's nominee, sweeping nearly every state thus far in the primary and anointing his daughter-in-law, Lara Trump, to be at the helm of the party. I've had the great honor of being endorsed by my father-in-law, President Trump. Where are my MAGA, ultra-MAGA patriots at today? Her role as co-chair of the Republican National Committee means who the National Party endorses and funds must have her stamp of approval. She can virtually ensure that each candidate will fall in line behind her father-in-law. She can also direct funds his way, not only for campaigning, but also potentially legal fees. And with her in leadership are more people on staff who claim without evidence that Trump didn't really lose the last election. Too many Republican leaders are lying to America, claiming that the 2020 election was stolen, describing January 6th as an unguided tour of the Capitol. Republican Colorado Congressman Ken Buck has been a vocal opponent of the former president. He joins a long list of Trump adversaries, including Senator Mitt Romney, the former vice president's brother, Greg Pence, and Senator Ben Sass to oppose the president, then announce their retirements. Republicans have underperformed in every election since Trump was elected in 2016. Most of Trump's opponents in the last five years have either lost their elections or retired. Even his former opponents, Senators Ted Cruz to Marco Rubio, have long since reversed course. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has too. In the wake of the January 6th attack on the Capitol, McConnell said this. There's no question, none, that President Trump is practically and morally responsible for provoking the events of the day. Now McConnell says this. I said in February of 2021, shortly after the attack on the Capitol, that I would support President Trump if he were the nominee. But some of those who served alongside the president in his own administration say they won't endorse him. I don't think he has the competence to carry out the job. Pretty undisciplined, uh, doesn't, doesn't like to read, doesn't read briefing reports. Someone who is constantly 
uh, rolling around in the mud and, and, and fighting at the drop of a hat and as it's sort of strictly in that mode, um, I'm worried about them getting us through. A growing number of Trump cabinet officials have voiced their concerns. That includes his top military officials, U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley, his former chief of staff and secretary of Homeland Security, secretary of state, attorney general and national security advisor. His vice president, Mike Pence, recently joined that list. During my presidential campaign, I made it clear that there were profound differences uh, between me and, and President Trump on a range of issues. And yet, despite it all, his support among Republicans has actually increased. A Pew study released last week found 73 percent of Republicans and Republican leaders hold a favorable view of the former president. That's up from 66 percent in July 2023. But, Dell, there may be a thorn in Trump's side. Former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley's voters, 10 to 20 percent of them, came out to support her while she was running in the primaries, and many of them say they won't support Trump in the fall. So the question now becomes, can Biden count them in his column? Alex Miller, Scripps News, New York. Alex Miller reporting from New York for us. Uh, so let's bring in our panel. We already got the intros out of the way, so we can dig right in it. So. Congressman Walsh, I'll begin with you. You supported Donald Trump before you opposed him. At the time in January of 2020, you told the Des Moines Register, quote, I think it is important that there is a Republican out there every day who says, this is not my Republican Party. This is not what I believe in. I'm not cruel. I'm not bigoted. Trump has secured now enough delegates to win the nomination again this time. Are Republican voters who support him cruel and bigoted? He preaches, good to be with you, he preaches cruelty, he preaches bigotry, he preaches authoritarianism, he preaches nationalism and hatred and all the rest. Um, look, I voted, for, I voted for Trump in 16 because I understood our political system is broken and we needed disruption. That's how a lot of his, I would say most of his supporters felt. And, and, and enter Trump the disruptor. Turns out he's an evil disruptor. Took me a little while to fully realize that. Um, but, but this is his party. And I said in 20, 2020 when I primaried Donald Trump that there needs to be a Republican out there saying that this is not who we are. I no longer believe that because I don't think this Republican party can change. Something new has to come. Terry, you are part of the very vocal uh, movement to stop Donald Trump inside the Lincoln Project. Trump was the first president to be impeached twice. As we speak, he is facing four separate indictments. Several of his former cabinet officials, even his vice president, are now speaking out against him. And yet his support is strong, maybe even stronger than ever. Why? Well, I think that there has been a certain amount of enabling going on here within the Republican Party that has uh, been troubling to watch because this march toward authoritarianism and the idea of the cult of personality that Donald Trump has created for himself within the Republican Party, because it's not a party anymore. They, they really don't believe in anything policy wise that is recognizable to those of us who were part of the Republican Party for so long. Um, Republican orthodoxy is out the window now. It is the party of Trump. And the idea of undermining our institutions, attacking our press, attacking the rule of law, um, the idea of retribution, um, and all the other uh, troubling parts of, of what Donald Trump and MAGA represents, it has, it has allowed a lot of these people that have enabled Trump to get where he is and not hold him accountable for any of it to become part of the problem. You know, cognitive dissonance is a hell of a drug, and so is political expediency and power. And I think there are a lot of people inside the Republican Party who know better, that have made a decision to uh, make a deal with the devil because they like the idea of being in power, no matter what it costs, even if it means undermining our democracy by supporting Donald Trump. So the fact that he has all of these indictments, that he's been impeached, that he's done things that are unspeakable um, and never would have been allowed in the Republican Party uh, pre-2015, tells you the direction the party is in. I'm with Joe, where I believe that the, the, current set, the current state of the party is irredeemable because after January 6th, it doesn't get to any, any more constitutionally troubling than what Donald Trump tried to do and what Republican enablers allowed. Miles, you actively resisted uh, Donald Trump even when you were serving in his administration. Do Donald Trump and his supporters have a point that it is people like you 
that he would call the D.C. swamp, trying to stop the will of the people. Are, were you part of the swamp? Well, I, I would actually say that Donald Trump himself uh, became a part of the swamp, um, but maybe not in the way that we're typically used to referring to that here in Washington, D.C. What I would say is this. There were folks like me, there were folks like Joe, who wanted to give Donald Trump a chance to rise to the moment, but our experience was that he didn't rise to the moment. I, he can call me a swamp creature all he wants, but I'm an American citizen who sat there in the Oval Office and the White House Situation Room in moments where American troops and innocent civilians were endangered, U.S. lives, and saw the president treat those like a decision about whether to order a Diet Coke or a Coke Zero. He treated those situations flippantly and recklessly and that was alarming to any of us who had run national security departments and agencies before. And I think that's why you've seen a historic number of people turn against him. And in fact, Donald Trump had the largest number of his own officials in American history turn against his presidency. That is profound. And the reason is because so many of us had firsthand exposure to him, saw how dangerous it was in the moment as he was making decisions or failing to make decisions and decided we couldn't have a president like that, even a president who was the head of our own party. Miles, this candidate now may be on the hook to someone for a half billion dollars should he receive funds from a foreign government, uh, Russia, the Saudi uh, nationals, uh, MBS, with regards to his bail situations in New York, uh, his appeals situation in New York. How concerned should people be about a candidate being on the hook for that much money? Well, if you thought Donald Trump had interests before he became president, business interests that might create a conflict of interest once assuming the presidency, then you ain't seen nothing yet. Because last time won't be anything compared to this next time. In these intervening years since the presidency, what we don't have insight into is who has Donald Trump been working with? Where has he been taking financing? Does he have new foreign interests? Now, the president uh, or a person who's running for president is not required to disclose their business interests and financing and those sorts of connections. And I do worry about those. There's the possibility for foreign influence and the possibility for corruption here. This is really significant, and we've never seen anything like it in American history. So we are in uncharted territory, as they say. I want to follow up on something that... Um... We heard in Alex's package, uh, the long list of Republicans in Congress, congressmen who flipped on Trump and then either got primaried or retired. Is it possible to be a Republican in Washington and oppose the former president? No! No. no. How I'm do you sorry, really feel? I've had too Ask much coffee this no, it, Tara's right. Look, Ask Liz, you, Ask Liz Cheney. There, there's no room. There's no lane. There's no room at the end. When you do what I did or Liz Cheney did or Adam Kinzinger did, you publicly stand up and say, I oppose Donald Trump and I'm running as a Republican. Your electoral career as a Republican is over. You throw away any shot at getting reelected. Stand by. We need to get in a quick break, but I have lots more questions for all of you on the other side, including whether a felony conviction would change the calculus for Republican voters. I'll get your takes right after this. You're watching Scripps News Reports, the new Republican Party. Stay with us. And we want to have unity, and we're going to have unity, and it's going to happen very quickly. Back now with our panel as we explore the power of former President Donald Trump in this new Republican Party. Tara, if the election were held today, it would either be a dead heat or, depending on the polls, Donald Trump is slightly ahead. These indictments in criminal cases apparently are not hurting him politically. In fact, they're making him stronger. You're a veteran of, of D.C. political communications. Would his support fade with a conviction? 
Uh, well, two things. Um, thankfully, the election is not being held today. That's why we have a campaign. Most Americans aren't paying attention right now. And most Americans were in denial that it would be a binary choice between Trump and President Biden. So uh, I'm confident as the campaign unfolds and more pa uh, Americans are paying attention and they recognize and reconcile with the fact that it is a binary choice. Um, and they're reminded of what four years of Donald Trump was like and what four more years could be like to to Miles Point, Project 2025, and the plans that they're laying out there, that the American people will snap out of this amnesia and recognize that it's democracy or Trump on the ballot in November. Now, as far as the convictions, polling has shown that any conviction of any of the cases would dramatically in decrease his support among uh, key Republicans. So Republican voters would not be co comfortable with a convicted felon um, uh, as the as the president of the United States. So that's why the Trump team has been trying so hard to get these cases delayed. They've been given uh, somewhat of, a, of an assist by the Supreme Court, by them taking up the immunity case. It's the timeline here is not in favor of those of us who think the American people should know whether they're uh, one of the number uh, top candidates for president is, is guilty of these very serious crimes. Um, hopefully the Supreme Court get, rules quickly and the American people are able to make that decision because the courts need to adjudicate the very serious crimes that Donald Trump is accused of. So the other part, just really quickly, I want to address about the, the possibility of violence or what happens if Donald Trump doesn't win. You have the Christian nationalism aspect of this as well now that is being put in the forefront of Trump's campaign. He is, it, the reports are that he's using January 6th and those conspiracies as something that is going to be a, a hallmark of his campaign and his embracing of this Christian nationalist movement where people believe that Donald Trump has been called by God and that their, their allegiance to him is sent from up above. That is very dangerous when it comes to accepting um, the results of the election and respecting our institutions and the guardrails that have been built in because they believe that this is bigger than the Constitution. That is very problematic. And Donald Trump is doing this, embracing this on purpose because it, it is a means to the, his ends to try to remain in power or disrupt our system, which is why you see so many people in the Republican Party no longer in favor of democracy because they think that if it's, if it's a calling from God from the higher up, then it's bigger than the Constitution. That doesn't work in America. We are a secular country. We are not a theocracy. And we need to not underestimate the power of that for so many of his supporters. Congressman, um, everything that has happened so far has only made him stronger. He is not winning despite the criminal charges. You could actually winning that he is, argue that he is winning in part because of them. I go back to that, that, that question. Who is Donald Trump's base? Hmm. It's a great question. Uh, again, I just want to echo what Tara and Miles said, and I want to be really clear and deliberate. Donald Trump wants there to be violence if he loses. He wanted that in 2020. Trump wanted January 6th. He wasn't just indifferent toward it. He wanted it, and he wants it again. Trump's base, the Republican Party base, primarily middle-aged and older white people, who want to go back to a 1954 America where men were men, women were women, and this was a white Christian country and the plant was in town and you could say Merry Christmas and all the rest. These voters, this base from which I come, no longer believes to Tara's point that the democratic process can get them that America back. So they want a strong man, they want a dictator to get them their America back. So, Congressman, it, 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 look, sadly, that's what they're embracing. If you know that, and Tara knows that, and Miles knows that, why doesn't the Supreme Court know that? Because they are not operating with all due haste. <laughs> I, I, I would argue uh, you'd have a hard time finding any of our institutions that are operating. In, with, with due sufficient haste. For the first time in American history, an American president lost an election and did everything he could do to try to overthrow that election. Think wow. about that. And, and here we are three years later, and that man that did that, Alex, has not been put on trial for that yet. 
I got 30 seconds left. Miles, I want you to weigh in 15 seconds. Tara, you weigh in 15 seconds. The Supreme Court, part of the solution or part of the problem? Well, look, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer it directly instead of obfuscating. I think the Supreme Court can be a part of the solution, should be. We need our institutions to be strong. Uh, but I think that this Supreme Court wants to avoid controversial decisions because they're worried about their credibility in the long run. So if they have an opportunity to punt, they're going to punt. Tara, John Roberts Supreme Court, part of the solution or part of the problem? So far, they've been part of the problem, but they have an opportunity to be part of the solution. It really truly is up to them. And if our democracy is going to be successful, democracy doesn't defend itself. The American people need to be in a position to make decisions, informed decisions, um, aided by uh, the Supreme Court in a position to rule properly if they want the Constitution to remain intact. I want to thank our panel for being with us. I uh, appreciate the time. We're back in a Thank moment. you. Thank you. Stay with us. Back now with two polls to, to ponder. Right now, President Biden's disapproval rating sits at 54%. That is taking a look at more than 1,100 polls. Former President Donald Trump's disapproval rating is just under 50%. Bottom line, half the country doesn't like Joe Biden, half the country doesn't like Donald Trump. That is where we are right now as we prepare for the Democratic and Republican National Conventions this summer. For the Democrats, there will be talk about the future of their party after this election, no matter how it turns out. For the Republicans, you really don't hear much of that talk. After all, they say Donald Trump is their man, and this the new Republican Party. Thank you for watching this edition of Scripps News Reports. I'm Del Walters reporting from Atlanta.